you are planning to deploy a highly available application in Azure and need very reliable, high-performance NFS storage for multiple virtual machines. You can do this with Azure NetApp Files in a snap. I'm Diane Patton, a technical marketing engineer with Azure NetApp Files, and today I will show you how to set this up. We will start with a Linux VM that needs storage on Azure NetApp Files. We will show how to create a capacity pool and an NFS v3 volume. We can then mount that volume to two Linux virtual machines. We'll then write a file to that directory and access that file from both virtual machines. So we'll do all of this in three easy steps. First, we'll check the prerequisites, which involves making sure we have an Azure NetApp Files account set up and we have a subnet delegated to Azure NetApp Files. Next, we'll create a capacity pool and a volume. And then last, we'll mount that volume to two virtual machines, write to the volume from one virtual machine, and then we can go ahead and view it from the other virtual machine. So let's get started. First, we will verify the prerequisites. We already have the Azure NetApp Files account created. We will use the Contoso-EastUS account. Looking at our virtual networks and the EastUS2 virtual network, we have a subnet delegated to Azure NetApp Files and another subnet that we'll use for virtual machines. We also already have two virtual machines running Ubuntu. One is called Linux Server 1 and the other is called Linux Server 2, which are deployed on the VM subnet. Next, let's create a new capacity pool and the volume. Going back to our account, select Capacity Pools and Add Pool. We'll name it Standard Service, use the standard performance tier for this pool, but if we discover that we need additional performance later, we can always create a new capacity pool and move the volume on the fly. We'll make it two Tebby bytes in size and then hit Create to create the capacity pool. We can then divide that up into separate volumes. So let's go to Volumes and we'll go ahead and create one. We then name and enter our desired features for the NFS volume. Let's make it 100 gigabytes in size, connect it to our virtual network and the ANF delegated subnet, and we will use the standard network features. We could choose an availability zone if we like. The advanced section allows us to specify a snapshot policy for protection and hide the path to the snapshot if desired. Select protocol. This is where we can select that we would like this to be accessible via NFS v3 although NFS v4.1 is supported as well. Kerberos for in-flight encryption is grayed out because it's currently unsupported for NFS v3. We could turn on LDAP. Azure NetApp Files acts as an LDAP client with NFS v3 for user and group numeric ID and name lookups. Active Directory is currently the only LDAP server supported. Access to the LDAP server is configured in the Active Directory connections within NetApp accounts. More information on using LDAP can be found at the URL below. We set the Unix permissions. This is only for the mount path. And by default, the owner and group assigned to the volume will have full control permissions, while everyone else gets no access to the volume. The owner and the group are root root by default. You can change that default by changing the Unix permissions here, which we will do to allow all users access to the directory for these demo purposes. Alternatively, if needed, you can change the permissions after the volume is created from Azure NetApp files or from the NFS client after the volume is mounted, as well as change the owner and group from the NFS client for more granular control over permissions. We can also set the export policy right here, which is like an access list allowing only certain hosts access to the volume. This configuration gives all hosts read-write access to the volume. Root access on or off allows you to restrict access to root on an export by squashing root to an anonymous user. The change ownership mode allows us to specify who can assign rights to a volume. And when restricted mode is configured, only root can change those permissions. Otherwise, unrestricted also allows the owner to make those permission changes. If you set more restrictive file permissions than the export policy permissions, the most restrictive permissions will win. So if you like, you can add tags to the volume here and then review and create and then create the volume. The volume comes up and we can go directly to the resource. This page makes it simple to mount. It even provides instructions. So we will go ahead and put that mount path to the volume in our clipboard. So finally, let's mount this new NFS volume to our Linux VM by mounting a directory. First, make sure to install NFS Common or NFS Utils on CentOS Red Hot if it's not already installed. For us, we already have it installed. 
So we'll make the directory NFS test, and we can see it's owned by TME TME, which is the user I'm logged in as currently. So let's mount the volume by pasting from our clipboard. Again, we got this command from the mount instructions page, except we changed the mount point to our new directory. And don't forget to edit the Etsy FSTAB file if you'd like persistence after reboot. Now we can see it's owned by root root for security, and these permissions correspond to the Unix permissions we selected when we created the volume on Azure NetApp files. So let's quickly create a file in that directory. Now let's do the exact same steps from the other virtual machine. and we can check that that file is accessible. This video shows how easy it is to use Azure NetApp files with NFS v3. It is simple to access the volume from multiple virtual machines, which is needed with many different applications, even just a web server, for example. For more information, please scan the QR codes below. Thank you for watching and have a great day.